This is Judge Gerald Hardcastle. He was the fifth judge on my two-month divorce case. His wife, Kathy Hardcastle, was the first judge. So when you see the following order, you can clearly see that one, he should have not been putting in any rulings, being that that's a conflict of interest, and he was asked to recuse. He failed to recuse and then tried to put in an order labeling me vexuous, trying to protect his wife and ignoring all evidence. On page one of the order, you can see Gerald Hardcastle admitted that they never held a hearing in person. Everything was done in his chambers. He also admits to receiving the motion to dismiss due to fraud on the court, a motion for annulment, and a writ for arrest for Bobby and the crimes that he committed, but yet took no action. Also notice the date on this motion, 4-2021, almost a year from today. On the second page of the order, you can see that he admits a decree was entered August 5th and it was promptly appealed to the Nevada Supreme Court. They, he then states, I was labeled vexuous and then labeled vexuous in this present case as well. Therefore, he's admitting there was never any hearings, just dismissals and labeling vexuous once I caught his wife in her misconduct. On page three, you will see he starts off by mocking the motions and my pleas for help to the court. He then says that he's faced with the problem of finding any piece of evidence. He says, I am dissatisfied with the divorce decree that was based solely on evidence. And after carefully reading my motions, he could find no evidence that supports my request for relief. He again then goes to on to continue about the conspiracy theory that I've reported to him even though his wife was clearly the person who started the entire form of corruption. On page four, you will see that he denies the motion to dismiss due to fraud on the court, which waives his immunity because he is knowingly interfering with interstate commerce. He's knowingly putting in a fabricated order on a case that his wife was already part of. He then denies my motion for annulment, even though I proved Bobby Ante committed fraud. And he also denies arresting Bobby Ante because he was being rewarded for helping the judges and the lawyers drag these proceedings out. So he is not being held responsible for anything. This is the fifth page of Gerald Hardcastle's order. You will see here that I begged the courts for a federal prosecutor as it was my right as a victim of a crime. He then says that my requests are unjust and grocery, grossly irresponsible, even though he could clearly see the legal malpractice of Garrett Chase, Grayson Moulton, Jennings and Fulton, Shumway Van, and every other lawyer involved in this matter. Notice on the bottom right of this page, there is a seal dated October 27, 21. The fabricated decree of divorce was filed August 5th of 2020. There was never one of these court seals put on the order until November of 2021. So for a year and a half, I was forced to still be in the control of Bobby Ante, Shumway Van, and the courts of Nevada as they tried to conceal this fraud and corruption within their courts. Castle, the judge who presided over the hearing on 10 19 18 for exclusive possession and temporary spousal support. You will see in the video she addressed none of that, and each time I tried to talk or show her any evidence, she told me it would not be heard and it would be heard at an evidentiary hearing, a hearing that she said took place on this very same day, but it never did. signed at the same time you signed the gift letter? It was signed before the last gift letter because I told him I would not sign the last gift letter until he signed the agreement because I didn't trust him or her. Perfect. So he acknowledges that he owes you at least 75000 You say he owes you 98000 $98,108, okay. and I have them all right here with the proof. All right. And so you want exclusive possession of the house? Is that what you want? Yes, ma'am. I have no idea who my house is financed under. I can't do anything with the utilities because he put me on absolutely nothing. 
I can't even move out and get a new place because with the $26,000 cash I gave him, he never even paid my last month's rent. But so 26000 was that? Was that in addition to the 98000 No, that's included in the 98000 I gave him $26,000 cash for my savings, in which he went to the realtor and told her it was a gift, and she never got a gift letter for that amount okay. and let him spend that money. Just to answer my questions. So for today, what you want, can you a hearing where we can determine all of this, if necessary, you want exclusive possession of the house, but you say that you gave $98,000 for it. That's correct. And what else do you want? I want the brown dresser, which was community property. He removed all community property from my home. I want the $4,060.74 that I used to pay off his car because he let me sell my car with the intent that I would have one that he bought and two days later took it away. Okay. And then I would also like the ring that I purchased because I paid for both rings and I would like him to stop coming by my home and slandering my foundation. All right, thank you. All right, counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, real quick, so obviously with the exhibits we just provided, we have all the signed gift letters. Um, yeah, and yeah. you know how the courts look at that on a brand new marriage, yeah. No. Right. It ain't going to work. Um, and then if you look at uh, exhibit number three, Your Honor, um, it shows text messages between Ms. Lakari and the realtor, Linda Ma, regarding the purchase of the house. Um, I understand there's been sort of some back and forth that both the request and reply. And the it's a marriage that didn't last a year. Right. You acknowledge you got 98000 or your client acknowledges you got the 98000 For part of the purchase of the house for the for them to live. He got 98000 right? Yes, and... He took the house in his own name. He and did he said, for, his for, position, that's a gift? Well, Your Honor, he, so the, the reason the house was in his name had to do with the procedure for closing on the house and the also financing. the mortgage. Right. right. So there's no gift. Right. So the house is going to have to be sold. And we would just ask that the She will the get her money back. Split evenly. <laughs> uh, after she gets her 98000 back, she, she came up with the 98000 right? Again, there's no 98000 The total was All right. So, we have obviously we either need a settlement conference or an evidentiary hearing yes, sir. to determine who put in what money and where the money went. That's correct, sir. And how much she's going to get back. We're going to spend thousands of dollars on attorney's fees, which you're probably going to have to bear the brunt of. So we can fight this out, not even a year of marriage. If there was overreaching, because parties who are married have a duty to treat each other fairly. Exactly. And there's no 98,000. Yes, sir. So do what you need to do. Just understand at the end of the day, you might not like where you end up at. Same with you. You went into this eyes wide open. Maybe a little naive. Maybe you let him overreach a little bit. No, I heard him three weeks after my son So we will look at all that at the evidentiary hearing. But this is going to take some time. And you need to do your discovery and get your exhibits and get your documents put together. Because just because you're not represented by an attorney doesn't mean that we're going to cut you some slack. I understand. Okay? In the meantime... Who's living in the house? Uh, as of July 1st, Ms. Lakari is in exclusive possession of the house, but uh, Mr. Ante is still paying out the mortgage each month. Okay. And can you afford to pay on the mortgage? Well, our agreement was when we were married that can I... Can you afford to pay the mortgage? Yes, but I've also given... Okay. Him. So, you want to remain in the house? Is the, is the mortgage behind now? No, Okay. So, where are you working, sir? The Vidara Hotel. And how much are you making per year? Um, approximately like 30. Notice the pause in the video. They cut out what he said next. All right. And all the bills are in your name? Yes. Okay. How quickly can we get an entry here? <laughs> Thank you.
You want to hear him Monday at 1.30, October 22nd, or do you need time to do a little more discovery? If we can have time, Your Honor, just to do a little more discovery okay. and prepare. I know um, Mr. Molden or Mr. Van will be attending that hearing, so. <clears throat> so about 60 days out, does that work? Does that work for us, Your Honor, yes. January's too far out. We could also do 30 days um, sometime in November. Okay. March 26th at 1.30 is the whole thing. March 26th at 1.30 then. March 26th at 1.30. Thank you. Um. All right. So she'll continue to live in the house. Um. She was given the mortgage information as soon as I moved out. She said she was going to pay and I have text messages. Okay. As well. She can make the mortgage payment. Well, I would like to present to the courts an agreement that was made between me and Bobby about the mortgage in the office because I'm still obligated to the lease of my office and the agreement was I would pay my office and he would pay the mortgage. And I, my lease is I not ended, so I want him to fulfill okay. that obligation. Just, just real briefly, Your Honor. So the office has to do with her businesses now. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ante. Um, mm -hmm. He's on the office as well. Do not interrupt. And we would ask that if she's going to live in the house and enjoy exclusive possession of the house, which she has been since July, that she actually pays the mortgage. So okay. That... The other option is I order the house be sold and that the proceeds be held until further order of the court to determine who gets what. And Unless we'll... the parties can agree as to any portion of it as to who gets it. Sure. We'll do it at the evidentiary hearing. Yeah. No, we'd be okay with the Well, I, would... the house I gave Bobby the option to quit claim my home and he's going to make me lose money by selling it, I have somebody who's willing to quit claim and take over the lease for me, right. so then I I'm do not, not prepared to, to order that home. today. Either you continue to live in the house, pay the mortgage, pending for the order of the court, and then at, when we have the evidentiary hearing to determine who's entitled to what, okay. then we can divide out the proceeds accordingly. Well, since or you can immediately list the house for sale, sell it, order the proceeds held, unless the parties agree upon some disbursement of some of the monies prior to that, but only by mutual agreement of the parties. So what do you want to do? I would like to request that he pay half of the lease that he signed for on the office since he... We'll deal with all of that at the evidentiary hearing. This is just a preliminary well, motion. Well, my, my concern is, is that I'm obligated to pay the fees at my office, and then I, he's going to throw can't have it the all. fees on my house as well after... Madam, you can't first. have it all. This is a preliminary motion, short-term marriage. We will decide this at the evidentiary hearing when we've taken testimony, looked at the exhibits and the documents that are presented, determined what your rights are, who gets what, and what happens to the money. Okay. Marriage can be a losing proposition for both parties sometimes, okay? I understand that. So, in the meantime, though, the question is, the house is there, you're living in it, either you pay the mortgage, 
continue to live there until we have the hearing in March, or we can order it listed for sale. You pay the mortgage while you're living there until it's sold, or you can move out, let him move back in, he can pay the mortgage. What do you want to do? I will pay the mortgage on my own home. All right. So, she'll be granted exclusive possession of the home. She'll be responsible for the mortgage. You've given her the mortgage information, sir? No, I don't have any information. Okay, information. Okay, uh, make sure it's the first. first. And uh, the utilities are all in my name. I all right. Got utilities so you're, do out. not <laughs> volunteer information. Don't be arguing and talking over each other in the courtroom. So make sure you say the utilities are in your name. They are now, and I had to pay all the past due I bills. don't care to hear all that. Uh, my question was, are the yes, utilities in your name? Most of the, them. I don't need to hear the rest of it. Uh, are the utilities in your name? Them. Which one's not in your name? The trash, he will not give the information, so I don't, can't switch it. The water, I cannot switch. The, um... The gas in the electric okay. are now in my so name. If the, those utilities are in your name, you pay them, you present a copy of the bill to her, and you are to, to pay him back for any utilities that he pays for. Okay. Pending the March They're all hearing. past due. So get them caught up. Get them caught up. And you'll find yourself in contempt of court. All right? All right. So you'll live in the house. You'll pay the mortgage. You'll pay the utilities that are in your name. He'll pay the utilities that are in his name. And present your copy of the bill, and you'll pay him back for whatever utilities he pays from today forward. Past utilities, you need to get those caught up, and we'll determine what, that in the March hearing. I had to pay $250. I don't, so I'm not asking how much yeah, today. Yeah. You present a demand to them. Hearing, I'll bring all this. Okay. And... You've got your evidentiary hearing date, conduct your discovery, comply with the procedural rules, make sure that you're complying with the procedural rules, and we'll see you back here March 26th. What about 1.30? The spousal hearing. support now. At this point, I'm not ordering any spousal support. It's a six-month marriage. But he so took $98,000 of my money. And that will be determined at the evidentiary hearing and a this is Judge Kathy Hardcastle, the original judge presiding over my hearing and the wife of Gerald Hardcastle. She concealed the fraud that was reported to her on 10-19-18 and then allowed my case to be switched to Judge Raina Hughes. Gerald Hardcastle claimed that there was no legal malpractice and no conspiracy. Yet you can see the order from the 10-18 hearing wasn't even put in until two months after the hearing. It was then put in by Raina Hughes after Kathy Hardcastle removed herself from the case. If you look on the right, you can see that Shumway Van was also representing the realtor. So that was Bobby's only witness. Therefore, she was not a credible witness. The trial had no jury and her counsel and Shumway Van was openly committing legal malpractice. And Gerald Hardcastle reported none of this, labeled me vexuous, and tried to protect his wife, Kathy Hardcastle. Here is the letter from a handwriting expert. It was obtained three months prior to the fabricated decree of divorce, and it was given to the courts why I still was represented by Jennings and Fulton, yet they did nothing to correct the order or ensure that I got justice. Here is the CD from the closing of the transaction. You can see the settlement agent was Nikki Sakakis bot. You can see from my complaint to the Secretary of State in 2018 that Nikki Sakakis bot was the notary. Pursuant to NRS 240.065B, this is a prohibited act. So therefore, Gerald Hardcastle trying to pretend that his wife didn't do anything and that there was no crime or fraudulent acts committed at the closing is fraud and they are all knowingly committing these crimes i'm asking you guys to stand with me and ensure that these judges go to prison where they belong and my home is returned to me